Hello everyone, it's Chris here from the Southwest Shooters and this is our new demonstration review video which is made in collaboration with my good friends at Crackshot and Newton Abbott and we're looking at this gun here. This is the second air arms in a row that we're looking at. They're becoming a strong favourite of mine. This is the S510 SL which stands for super light and this is the carbine version meaning it's slightly shorter. So, every gun that you buy pre-owned, this is a pre-owned gun from Crackshot, will come with a six month warranty if it's over 300 pounds. And they can send it to anywhere that you want through an authorized RFD transfer. So with that out of the way, I think the only other thing that you really need to know about is the price. This is 599 and they will absolutely accept party exchanges. And if you're interested, I would phone them and speak to Eric or James. The only thing it doesn't come with is this scope. This is my own scope and it's a little cheapy one. And I think that if I can get the kind of groupings that I'm about to demonstrate to you with a cheapy scope, you should be able to do exactly the same with whatever it is that you're using. This is an unbelievable gun. All right. like. Lots of people have been commenting on some of the videos over the last year or so about air arms and I think that a lot of people are misinformed about how good they are. I'll talk about some of my criticisms shortly but in the data and I'm going to show you the whole thing at the end. I'm not speeding anything up. I'm going to show you all of it with my commentary shooting at 30, 40 and 50 meters. It's very difficult to think about um, how a gun of this price with the kind of elegance and simplicity could be could be improved upon. I mean, I'm going to make a couple of suggestions in a minute, but I'm just going to talk you through some of the things. So it comes with the uh, 10 shot magazine, which is a classic fixture of air arms, multi-shot rifles. It's the same as in the Galahad and their other guns and the fill adapter. And that really is all you need to, to get going. The thing that's really um, good is how simple and elegant the gun is to use. So this is the second modern air arms that I've used with one of these side lever actions and it really is um, fantastic to use. Very, very simple, very, very elegant to use, very reliable. I've had no problems with this gun at all since I've been using it. It's very difficult really to think about the, the detailed specifics of the gun and what it is that you need to know because they're so dependable and so reliable. There is the fill probe adapter so all you do is you screw off the cap, put the fill probe on and fill it to, it says 190 bar um, but I think you can fill it up slightly more to 200. The big thing that I'm going to talk about in terms of my criticisms of this gun okay, is that this is not regulated. It doesn't have the R designation, the R meaning regulated. So that means that sometimes, and you're going to see this actually in some of the footage in a moment, that the groupings can change dependent on the pressure that's inside the gun. So that's going to require quite a lot of understanding and knowledge of the gun when you're using it, right? The other thing that is possibly for some people, and this does include me, a little bit restrictive is the fact that you're probably looking at between 60 and 70 good shots from a 190 bar fill. But then I think we need to think about who this gun is aimed at. The fact that it's so light and it is wonderfully light, this is aimed at sporting um, practitioners, let's put it that way. People who like to be out in the field. And this gun would be perfect for them. Not only is it elegant and beautiful? It's exceptionally accurate at 30 and 40 meters. I think that you need to really consider the safe dispatch of quarry at anything other than about 30 meters, if I'm being honest with you. But that's for you to decide. I'm going to show you the data and then you can make up your own minds yourselves. But the fact that it is so light would mean that you can take standing shots easily. I'm not going to demonstrate any in this video, but I am going to show you how well the gun shoots at 30, 40 and 50 meters. 
It groups exceptionally well with the Air Arms pellets. The 5.52 Air Arms Diabolo fields are outrageously good. They're the best pellet that I've ever used. The reason why I'm going to go into so much detail with the data I'm about to show you is because you might be looking to buy this gun yourself. And if you can't come down to crack shot and you can't test it at the distances that I'm about to show you, you want to be informed, right? So not only should this demonstration be indicative of what you, what you can do with these kind of guns, it's actually indicative of what this specific gun is capable of. People always talk about the uh, safety of these guns, and the fact that it's adjustable on the trigger. Now, that probably is an issue. Okay, you want to be as safe as possible when you're shooting. Shooting, And when I say probably an issue, it's never really been a problem for me. It's just something that you get used to. I haven't, because I'm not used to anything different, I can't really view it as a problem. But that might be something for you. So I'm going to end it here. All right, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you all of the data that I've just shot shooting at those three distances. I'm making an effort to try and talk whilst I'm doing it all. And I'm not going to speed anything up. And the reason why is because you might be interested in what this gun is capable of if you're buying it. The final thing that I'll say is that Air Arms guns use a different moderator um, port. So like that isn't one of the half inch UNFs that I'm more traditionally used to. So you would have to think about that. And I would recommend, by the way, if you were using this for sporting purposes, using a moderator. However, fantastic gun, air arms, they get a lot of flack from people who I don't think they know what they're talking about. Anyway, thank you for all of the comments, good and bad, I welcome them. Thank you Crackshot, and I will see you soon for some more videos. Take care, bye bye. So the first thing that I can see when I look at that grouping is that it's pretty good. I'm happy with that, but the gun is not, the scope is not zeroed in properly. So I'm going to take it a few clicks to the left, then I'm going to see what I can do on the slightly smaller splatter target. Uh, if James, if James, if you're watching this, I am working on the technique that we discussed the last time I had the pleasure of being in your company, all right? and it would appear that it is working. I don't want to talk about what that technique is on camera because it's a secret, but um, James, you definitely know what I'm referring to. So what I'm going to do, there's no science behind this, but I'm just going to say that it is... I just did seven clicks to the left. So we'll see if that is any better on the next target.
I still need to come to the left. Just a little bit. So, what we'll do is, I, I mean, I can tell you right now, this is an extremely consistent gun. Uh, believe it or not, other than the major zeroing that I did last night, this is the first time I've used this. And the pellets are going, going exactly where I want them to. So let me put another 10 pellets in the magazine. And we will see if I can get even closer to the bullseye on the smallest of the targets. Again, James, I'm trying to work on the technique. Let's see what I can do. Oh. Apologies, I didn't do well with that one. Or maybe I did. There we go. Okay, now I can see as I was. Right, well, that's a good start. That was a flyer. I'm out. Right, that looks good. Let's just see if I'm out. Yes. Okay, so there were two flyers there. But we're not going to be discouraged. We're not going to be sad. Um, I'll just wait for this vehicle to go by. So the one mil dot holdover was a sensible idea, but I was still a bit low. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click it up, maybe four clicks. Again, there's no science behind this. All I'm doing is just feeling it. Like um, I haven't looked into the um, ballistic curves and all of those kind of things. I'm, I'm really just doing this by, by feel and intuition. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing again, but on the slightly smaller, oops, drop the pellet there, my bad. Um, on the slightly small, smaller splatter target, but I've gotta be honest with you, I'm very impressed by that. Again, maybe a couple of flyers, yes, but they happen, or it could have been my technique. James, remember. That was a fly.
that wasn't as good as the first group but that's okay we don't have to worry about that let's see what it's like on the last smaller group i'm very happy with the the overall area of where the pellets are hitting on this on the little splatter target so what i will do is i will take it i will take it i will now fire into the smaller of the splatter targets and I might even, because the mark is there, take it out to 50 meters and see what we can do with it. And I think that would be some really good, good testing of the gun. So last pellet going in. Pop you in there. James, thinking about it? Right, let's go for the small one. There we go. Okay, now let's, let me see. So let's give this a try. Two more bots. Too low. So I'm gonna have to go for three mil bots because that one. Let's go for four. Okay, I'm gonna keep it at four. So that was a mixed bag there. What I think that I might try and do, I'm gonna just keep the target up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take it to three mil dots and I'm just gonna see what the grouping is like because I think if you were using this gun for sporting purposes, you would not be safe. It wouldn't be responsible to do so at this distance due to the um, inconsistency in the grouping that I got just then. But whilst I'm here and uh, everyone's interested, I'm gonna see what this does at 50 meters, we're at 50 meters, um, at three mil dots rather than four. And we'll just see what the grouping is like because the target is fairly big. It's one of the, um, I don't know how many inches it is, but it's one of the bigger, splatter targets that you get. Let's give it a try. Three mil dots. That's cool. Okay, I'm actually going to do that again. I think the money, James, thinking of you, buddy. Thank you. 
better. That was a little bit wayward. Okay. That was a better group. Again, there are a couple of flyers. As you can see from the little tagger blowing on it, it's a windy day. But that is this gun at 30, 40, and 50 meters using the Air Arms Diablo Field pellets. 5.52. Very impressive.